All right, we are doing 5.6. We're going to look at scatter plots today, and we're going to understand the data that they give us. So if you look on page 325, um, we have at the very top, you see three scatter plots. You see the first one on the very top. Um, you see a bunch of points, and they all kind of trend in an upward direction on the first one. On the second one, the middle one, you see, um, here we're going to make this, you see a bunch of dots that are trending in a downward um, direction. And then in the, on the right, you see there's dots all over the place. So on the first one, you see a positive correlation because the line is going up middle one you see a negative correlation because the line is going down and the, the last one where the, Scott, the plots are all over the place um, you see relatively no correlation so they're just kind of random and everywhere so um, the example one has you identify which one those are whether they're positive correlation negative correlation or no correlation if you turn the page um, the example two has you make make a scatter point plot and they have you decide whether that data is, shows a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no, no correlation. Um, so you're going to go ahead and take all the information that they give you on that chart and you're going to put it into that plot which is they've already done for you in the middle of the page. Um, and then you can tell that that actually has a positive correlation because the numbers or the points keep going up. Okay, um, they give you some practice on the bottom of that page. On example three, they do something very similar. They have you plot all those points on the top of page 327. And they, so let's see, there's years on the bottom and then the clusters on the side and they have you um, put it on the graph and you can see the line is going up. So it is a positive correlation. Um, Example four on the next page is very similar to those. And then even on the next, this is also 5.7. So if you turn to page 335 on 5.7, um, you can see that um, this is essentially using the same kind of thing. Um, so they give you some new vocabulary, so best fitting line, the linear reg regression, and linear interpola uh, interpolation which is kind of guessing um, where a line would fall within all of those dots. So you can tell, if you look at the page at the bottom of page 335, you can tell um, they put, put all of those points into a graph. And they drew a rough estimate of a line in the middle of all of those. And um, you can guess what the next couple points are going to be around by putting a, a dot on one of on that line. And that is essentially 5.6 and 5.7. Oh, 5.7 on page 338, example 4. Um, one thing I should note about that is when you find a zero sum function, you are essentially trying to find out what x equals so that you should see. Yeah, you're essentially trying to find out what the x would equal in the function of zero, if the function was zero. So if the first, you see f of x, if the x was zero. Um, I think that might be going too fast here. So you can tell on the example four on the solution, you can tell that um, Let's look back to let's look back to page 339 on number seven. You see f of x equals 7.5x minus 20. Um, so you are trying to find what x equals. Um, if the so you have f of x equals 7.5 minus 
is 20. We're going to pretend this is 0. So the function of 0 equals this. So really what you're doing is you're just solving for that as if this is 0. So this, and this x and this x aren't actually the same thing. So you're just solving for x here so that this side equals 0 and this side equals 0. Okay, and that is zero-sum function.